here with us today to share her story. So Meredith, you know, um, you and I have talked, we're going to try to keep this really informal, just sort of a conversation together. Um, but I'd really like for folks to just get to know you a little bit. So if you wouldn't mind maybe just sharing where you're from and what your relation to this disease is. Sure. Um, I'm so happy to be here, Hillary. Thank you very much. Um, I live outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, we, my mother had um, mycosis fungoides, but she was diagnosed back in 2005. So it was a little bit, it was a while ago. Um, she did die in 2012 uh, from the disease. And um, I hear and see about so many advances that have been made in medicines and treatments since 2012 that being part of CLF has enabled me to see the advances made. And I'm excited and happy for uh, patients and caregivers because uh, we all need that support and hope. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. You know, especially with this disease too, like you mentioned, there are so many um, different things being researched and different clinical trials going on. So it is just important for um, us to try to stay hopeful and to know that there's always someone working to find the cure that everyone is so desperate to find. And um, But in the meantime, we are just really grateful that you're here with us today and just willing to share a little bit about your experience. So um, I know this is kind of a, a very broad question, um, but how has cutaneous lymphoma impacted your life? Well, <laughs> tremendously. It's one of those things where we had never heard of it. Um, I mean, back in 2005, we usually associated breast cancer with cancer, period, with women. And um, my mother had hives. She had, she was itching a lot. Her dermatologist thought it was allergies. Um, her skin was red and she was told to use cortisone creams and what have you for a very long time. When mom was diagnosed, she was in stage four. And um, we had never heard of CTCL. It was very fortunate for me that uh, where I was working at the time, our school librarian did some research and found the foundation. And that gave us, yeah, that gave us a community, people to talk to, people who understood what this disease was. Because before then, no, none, none of our friends, none of the community had heard of this disease. And that was difficult. It felt lonely and isolating. Um, mm -hmm. With the cutaneous, cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, we found a whole host of resources as well. And that was very normalizing. Uh, it, it made you feel like there are people out there who care, who have expertise. And we went after that. Uh, research was a very big part of being a caregiver for me. Um, it gave me a little bit of control in a, in a very uncontrollable situation and a very scary situation. Um, my mom, my mom, started going through her treatments fairly quickly. The treatments that were supposed to last years, uh, suddenly after a year, we'd have to move on to something else. And doing research enabled us to, when we went with her to doctor's appointments, say, what about this? What about that? And brainstorm as a team with our physicians. And I think that was a big change for my mother, who was used to doing what her doctors told her. They were they were the experts. They are the experts. But we brought another level of research and questions to the office visits that helped. Um, mm -hmm. And especially if you have those tools to do that, you know, if you don't have those resources, it's hard to even know where to look for that information. So and. You know, did, yeah. what were the, what did you find was the biggest benefit to um, your own research with your mom? Was there anything that you felt was particularly helpful? Well, 
you know, one of the things we noticed was not as much the information we found, but I was cognizant of what we weren't finding because uh, increasingly my mom, as a caregiver, my mom needed help with wound care. And uh, I couldn't find any information about wound care or for the lay person, how to help your loved one. And that was really a very, very steep learning curve to say the least. Um, and I would say one of the lessons I took away as a caregiver was that I needed a team as well to work with, as well as my mom did with her physicians. So um, an example would be that we found that just practical conditions and the type of disease as it was presenting itself demanded personal responses to wound care. So it wasn't wound care one size fits all. We were finding, well, that doesn't work for mom, but this does. And I would share that with her physicians and they would say to me, please write this down because we need to know this. We need to build a database of information on wound care. And, and especially that, such a rare disease. I mean, it's like, it's so, a lot of the things too, even with the community connections and I'm sure you're familiar with the old listserv, it was like folks, you know, giving each other helpful hints and things that work for them. And, you know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Meredith was, Meredith, you were the one that um, helped us start the skincare corner. And that was just so helpful just to be able to provide those things that no, they may not help everybody, but it could be helpful to somebody. And especially with this disease, it seems like there are so many options to try. Um, and you may not necessarily get all those options from your doctor. And so if you can educate yourself and really know where to start, it, it can just be so life-changing with this. Yes, it gives the caregiver a little bit of a support system. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what's hard about being a caregiver is you're really always giving outwards um, and everybody's focused on the patient. But, you know, who's taking care of the caregiver? And it really has to be self-care most of the time. Um, and so if you can build a small support system, uh, the nurses, the wound care nurses, the nurses, the physicians, I found to be extremely supportive and they took me under their wing to educate me. The problem for me as a caregiver was when we were leaving a healthcare center going home and all of a sudden it was just me and my mother. Uh, I didn't have a lot of the resources that we had available to us in the healthcare centers. And that's yeah. where I found uh, I really needed to develop a system of how to care for my mom's wounds. One thing that I found helpful was if you write a list or a set of steps and post it, whether it's in her, in, in a healthcare setting bedroom or just for yourself to follow every day for healthcare. So it helps have a routine, especially for wound care, because it preps you a little bit, both of you for it. Um, and even setting out what you need, uh, knowing the amounts of Vaseline that you need to get from Costco, uh, talking to people about where do you get these amounts of gauze? Where do you get the wraps? That is invaluable. And I think mm -hmm. the bonuses of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation is that it provides a group of people who are, who are there for you, who are only too happy to help share that information. Um, Absolutely. Do you, would you, do you have any other like tips or recommendations for folks that, they, that you would like to share as a caregiver? Yes, you know, I, I always had a bag to take with me for my mom if if doctor's appointments became a very long wait. Uh, we, we had a blanket, we had food, we had, well, it didn't take me long to realize that I needed a part of that bag for myself. Um, so when you're taking care of your loved one, take care of yourself too at the same time. Pack the bag for yourself as well. 
uh, and don't skimp on anything that might seem silly but comforting. So if there's a certain type of tea that you would like to have that's not, you can't get it in the hospital, take it with you. Uh, it will make, it will give you a small amount of comfort in a mm-hmm. situation that's out of, out of control oftentimes. Yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, it's so cliche, but you can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're not caring for yourself, it's, you know, just really challenging to then be able to offer the support that you need to, to the person that you're caring for. So that's a really good reminder not to, don't forget about yourself. It's not selfish. It's, you know, self-care is just so important, especially as a caregiver, as a human being. And, you know, like I said, often you guys are just so overlooked. It's like, everyone is so focused on the patient. What are your symptoms? You know, what's going on with you? And then the people around them are just sort of forgotten and it can be so easy to just feel drained and just like if you're giving so much of yourself you don't save anything for you you know so true hillary and i would say that um caregiving is it's a it's a duty it's something you do for a loved one it it there it's there's nothing easy about it it's very very hard and there's something about doing it I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I wanted to do it. It was love. It was loving my mother, uh, doing, er, taking care of her, but it was very draining. And that is an understatement. I mean, emotionally, physically, uh, the amount of anxiety and worry and planning, uh, managing all the people, all the medicines, all the time factors, the pain level of your loved one, um it it, there's so many levels to it and it could go on for a very long time years and years and i i think that one thing that's important to know is that it's easy as a caregiver to think what about my life i mean at your hardest lowest point sometimes you think what what about my life it's passing by and Mm -hmm. and that's okay to think that (laughs) <laughs> yeah. that it's hard and it's not uh it's hard to turn some things positively but if you know that you're not alone that what you're doing is uh, I, I mean beyond a gift it, it really truly is the deepest love and you probably wouldn't have it any other way uh but mm-hmm. it is hard and to acknowledge yeah. that give that to yourself yeah That's- well and there's a, i always I always hear the saying, it's okay to not be okay. And I think that, you know, yeah. especially today, especially today, it's like you ask somebody, it almost becomes this formality that everyone's like, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. But it's like, it's okay if you're not doing well. You know, these are big things that people are dealing with and they can be scary and challenging. And, um, you know, that's why the foundation is here. We're here for when you're not doing okay. And we're also here for when you are doing really well. But we just, you know, we know that we're all whole human beings and there's, you know, emotional stress that comes with this too. And like I said, it doesn't just affect our patients, but um, Meredith, it, how did you deal with the emotional stress of caring for your mother? Is that, you know, do you have any insight onto that? Was it something that was, um, you know, how were no, you able to overcome it? I think you don't overcome it. I think you learn to live with it. And, mm-hmm. uh, Sometimes you're better at it than others. Sometimes it's a lot of tears and anger and frustration, uh, a lot of worry and anxiety, constantly feeling stretched and busy. But there are moments of grace in caregiving that if you can find those and hold on to them, they will serve you well and you can bring them back later and think about them. Uh, that you can't get any other way. And I think that's often true dealing with any illness or uh, any crisis situation that you come to know each other or yourself uh, in ways that you wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, I think, you know, I think again, you find, you find caring and love in the most unusual places. Uh, And uh, one of the ones that was unusual for us was our pharmacy. And they really 
stepped up to the plate and became really dear friends throughout the whole time I was ordering loads of bandages and and I was getting very specific for what I needed when as the wound care progressed and um, boy did they go to bat for us with the insurance company and the nurses did too. Uh, my mom had been in a healthcare facility for wound care and when it was her time to come home because it took hours to do her wound care and with pain medicine and what have you, I would go in because I could do that for hours, but the poor nurses had many patients and they couldn't spend that long. So I would f go in and help mom. And we spent that time together. And it was twice a day towards the end. And uh, the insurance company said we could not have nursing help at home because I was doing it all. So therefore it was clear we didn't need it. And that was a real shocker. And I, and I think when you're a caregiver, oftentimes it, it, it's difficult to handle insurance because who else is going to do it if, if the caregiver isn't, but then you shouldn't be penalized <laughs> for it, you know, with insurance. And I, and I mentioned that because I've had many caregivers come up to me and we all sort of sigh and hang our heads when we talk about the difficulties you get through bureaucracy and red tape uh, when you're doing caregiving. But yeah, the flip side of that was the grace that I had with mom and the times we had together and uh, the intimacy we had that we never would have had otherwise physically. Uh, so there, there, there oddly was enough that I was able to take away from being a caregiver that's helped me after my mom died that I hold very, very dearly to myself. Um, that helps you live with, with being a caregiver. Yeah. It's traumatic. Yeah. It's traumatic being yeah. a caregiver. Definitely. You do, and I think that it's... I'm sorry, what were you going to say? You do things you never think that you'll really be called on to do. And... Yeah. Uh, and you rise, you rise to the occasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just, really, you're really inspiring, Meredith. I just really appreciate you being here with us and just sharing with us today. So thank you. I mean, I think that it's a good reminder for all of us too, to hear from you and just to make sure that people and, um, almost like speak up for yourself as if you're speaking up for the person that you're caring for. It's like, if, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed or scared or all those feelings it's like okay take a minute realize you're a person too and you know speak for yourself as if it was for um, your mother or whoever you're caring for just to just take care of yourself because it's a lot yeah yeah it's, a, it's um, okay to uh to have low very low sad moments and then it's okay stay open to the happy good moments that will will be there because uh, mm -hmm. that's all part of caregiving yeah absolutely absolutely and you know you've already sort of touched on this a little bit but is there anything else you'd like to share in terms of how the foundation influenced your journey at all yes you know uh, as I said my mom died in 2012 and actually the, the foundation um, has changed my life greatly because I was a teacher and professor and I ended up making Christmas nuts and uh, the foundation yes. supported me <laughs> to do this. And I what sold them, <laughs> yeah. I sold them. And it was to help raise money to start the skincare corner uh, so that we could collect data on how to do wound care. Well, I had never run my own business. I had no idea what marketing and uh, sales were. And we ended up doing very well. Uh, we were picked up by some very large food, gourmet food chain stores. Uh, we did end up closing because we were so successful. I couldn't keep moving forward with it. But mm -hmm. it did what it was supposed to. And that was start, hopefully, the skincare corner and start yeah. collecting data and talk about wound care because um, 
I, I think we'll always be talking about that. There are new innovations, new ways of doing things. And as I said, one size doesn't fit all. So people will will find things that work and we need to share it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the skincare corner lives on. You know, we've got all of those tips and tricks and things that um, the wonderful medical professionals that you have had conversations with and gathered that information for us. So that's on our website. So make sure to check it out if you haven't. Um, you know, Meredith, thank you so much for being here today. I just wanted to find out if you had any final thoughts to share before we wrap up here, if there's anything else you would just like to say to the community. I, I, I would say that just um, hold your heart carefully to yourself as a caregiver because um, it will break, it will hurt, it will come together and you'll be able to find a way to live with being a care, caregiver and you probably wouldn't have done it any other way. So um, good for you and honor yourself and uh, just good for you. There's so many people, we're all together in this. Yeah, thank you so much. I just wanna give you a big hug through the screen. Give everybody a virtual hug. <laughs> This we're going to wrap up for today, but you know, we hope that this was helpful to you, everybody, and um, it'll be posted on our website. So if you would like to watch it back at any point, you can check that out within about a week. And Meredith, it's just so many thanks for the skincare corner, for all of the information that you have helped collect for us and for being here today. Just thank you. We're so thank grateful you. for you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> all right, everybody, we will hope to see you at the next one. Thank you so much for being here today.